If there's one thing that these past couple of weeks in the news has shown is that there are eerie similarities with what's happening in China and in the Sinosphere that's both within and outside of China in the Chinese communities and in the West, in countries like the United States. In the United States, you've seen this great resignation going on where people are just refusing to work. They're quitting their jobs. And in China, we have this movement called the Tangping movement. So what I wanted to do in this clip is have a, just a quick look at the Tangping movement in China and then have a look at the great resignation and just this mindset that's going on in the West and also give a new perspective of what's going on in China and in the Chinese communities, both within and outside of China, because I really believe that you can't truly appreciate what's going on in China, both politically and socially, without the lens of the Chinese language. If you just do it through English or another language, you're just getting this floating meaning on top. And I think nothing proves this more than what we've seen with the song Bo Li Xin or Fragile Heart by Malaysian singer Namewe or Huang Ming Zhi. I did a couple of clips there actually deciphering all of the layers of the hidden meaning that were attacking the establishment, the CCP, mainland China, and all of these social issues. But he managed to do it without ever saying a person's name or any topic directly. He used all of these techniques within the language, within dialect, all of these hidden meanings and symbolism to communicate the meanings. And all this was done through the vehicle of the Chinese language. So what I'll do in this clip is I have my trusty pen here and I kill two birds with one stone. It saves me a bunch of editing afterwards and I get to show you in real time actually how the Chinese language works and how it's interpreted internally within Chinese people and what these deeper meanings might be. And hopefully it will give you a greater appreciation of these things as well. And while I don't expect everybody to learn the Chinese language, one thing you can do is if you take a screenshot of these terms as I'm writing them up, or you just hold your phone up, Google will do character recognition and then you're going to be getting the real terms that you can then do searches on. You don't need to just search for these topics in English. You can search for them in Chinese and get a deep deeper understanding of these topics that we're talking about and not just look through the lens of the English language. Okay, so let's go. I just want to start with uh, a saying in Chinese that I think really sets the scene well. So this first line here, duo zuo, duo zuo. Duo means many, zuo, a lot. So you do a lot, duo zuo, you get a lot wrong. This means shao, it means a little or few. So I'll do the same thing. So we have the word to do and to wrong, so we'll just repeat it here now. So that says shao to shao to. It means if you do a little, you get a little wrong. And then this last one says bu to bu to. So what that literally means to 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 to. You do a lot, you get a lot wrong. Shao to shao to. You do a little, you get a little wrong. Bu to bu to bu to bu to. You don't do anything, you don't get anything wrong, and this saying here, butuo, also means like not bad, it's not bad, it's pretty cool. So basically it means if you do a lot, you stand to get a lot wrong. You do a little, you're going to get a little bit wrong. But if you don't do anything, you're not going to screw up. You're not going to get anything wrong in butuo. Life is going to be a breeze. This is a saying that we joke about when we're doing cross-cultural training across Asia. And many cultures across the region can actually understand that because it has deeper implications here. Because if you rock the boat or you push the powers that be, you're going to be creating waves for yourself and trouble for yourself. So it's much easier just to do nothing and just cruise through life. And this is the note that I want to start on as we're getting into this Tang Ping lying flat because it relates actually right into what's happening in the United States as well with the Great Resignation. That is this feeling of almost active apathy. <laughs> If that could be a thing, apathy is not really giving a crap, but active apathy, you're intentionally not giving a crap. And there's a reason. So getting into this whole concept of Tang Ping, let's have a look at the character for it. This character here is Shen and it means body. So basically, anytime you see this character in something, it's got something to do with the body or a part of the body or something that the body does. So if we have a look at the word for Tang, so this character here, the body part is actually on the left to show it's got something to do with the body. And then the word tongue. 
Now this by itself would give the sound. So tang, the thing that sounds like tang that has to do with the body is the body laying down. That's why actually in one of my clips when I was breaking down the song Bo Li Xin, I said Tang Shen because I was, this character was screaming. It's not Tang Shen, it's Tang Ping. So to lay down, when the body lays down, and then this word Ping, Ping, means level or flat. And so Tang Ping means to be lying flat. There's a reason why they've done A manifesto was written earlier this year by this young Chinese guy and he was sick of his 996 job. What is that? Well, it's another cultural thing. It's Jiao Jiao Liao, nine in the morning to nine at night, six days a week. And so this is the standard rat race that we see. And so he quit and he rode his bike around the country and then he wrote this manifesto and in writing it and then coming back, he realized actually he didn't have to be in the rat race and he could actually live on much, much less than that if he didn't enter the rat race and try and do everything that was expected of him, buying a house and getting into debt and all of this stuff. He could just lay flat doing nothing and survive. But there was something much deeper in him doing that and this idea that went like wildfire through not only China, but Chinese communities outside of China as well, where people are thinking, heck yeah, why should we be in this rat race? So I wanna show you this next sentence in Chinese because it's almost the war cry of the life lying flat movement and I think that it could probably be used as that same war cry for the people who are resigning in the US in this great resignation. So this says What that means, so we've learnt this one, this is the body laying down, so ping, laying down flat This basically means possession Jiu Tai are chives, or they're actually leeks, but I use the word chives, one, because it sounds like Jiu Tai, and everybody knows what chives are. So, Tang Ping de Jiu Tai. What are Jiu Tai and why are they used? Well, these leeks or the Chinese chives are used as an analogy because as they grow up, as they get to, they're useful, but if they get too many of them, if they get too high, you can just cut them down. As long as you don't take out the roots or cut them out at the roots, they're going to come back even more than ever and you can keep doing that to harvest them. And so the word jiu tai is used for basically the general population that are useful to the CCP or to the Chinese government or the powers that be. So jiu tai or Chinese chives, leeks, is the symbol used to represent just the average person that it's being exploited to make the powers that be rich, but they don't actually see anything in return. And so this bottom bit means This symbol is actually really interesting. The top part of it, hai, means to harm. And then with a knife is to chop down or to cut down. So this means basically to harvest. And so what they're saying, If you have chives or leeks that are lying flat, you can't really chop them down. They're hard to chop down. And so in lying flat, it's a protest against the harvesters, the people that are wanting to get wealthy and powerful off of the backs of the chives. The only thing that the chives can do to protest is to lie down. And this is very similar to what we see in the US and in the West when people are resigning. Maybe through COVID, they've been at home and they've seen, heck, I can actually do this. I don't need to go in to this nine to five or nine to nine job six days a week. I don't have to sit and commute and do all of this thing for the man. And I can actually exist pretty well. Not only that, maybe I can get a job here and there and do this, but the quality of life is much better. So in a lot of ways, COVID has brought about this realization that they don't actually have to be in the rat race to be able to just survive on the planet. Not only that, they can actually possibly have a more enjoyable life. Mental health issues and things, maybe they'll get better if they don't have to just be locked into this rat race. Now, on the other side, it means that maybe they have to sacrifice income to a point and not get all of those things, but do they really need these things? So there's this really interesting parallel to what's happening in China and what's happening in the West. They're not so different, but I think in looking at the language here, if you can Google some of these words in Chinese and start to see some of the memes, go into Google Images and see what's being said, you'll see there are more similarities than differences between the general people in mainland China and people in the West. Another thing that I hope you'll take away from this is that China is not the CCP. The Chinese people at large are not that different 
different. And just because the CCP may say something through their mouthpiece, they may censor. It's really interesting just having a look at my phone. I have several Chinese keyboards here. If I use the built-in one to my Xiaomi phone, the term Tang Ping doesn't even come up when I type it in. I have to actually use Google's input to have that come up. And that's because China has actually forbidden this term. They have banned this term because it's so threatening to them. They needed to totally eradicate it and tear it out by the roots, unlike chives. So I hope this has given you an interesting perspective into what's happening in society, both in China and outside through the lens of language. Once you jump down the rabbit hole of the Chinese language, it's just something that's just so rich and fulfilling as you learn the language. And that learning is going to go on until the day you die. There's just so much to be learned. But the Chinese language is not the CCP. It's this fascinating vehicle that we're seeing political discourse going on. And hopefully I've been able to give you some insights and some tools that you can actually broaden your understanding of some of these issues and even gain some deeper understanding of what's happening in your own backyard. If you are interested in learning more about the Chinese language, I put a free webinar together to give you a really good foundation into tonal languages, Chinese, Vietnamese, Thai. Totally free, jump in there and maybe this might inspire you to take off on a new linguistic tangent in your life that's totally going to change your life. I'm Stuart J. Raj. Don't forget to scan the QR code up top. Come and join the conversation with us on the Discord server and I'll see you on the other side.